Good evening with the Digital 4G Sports Roundup. I'm Anne Marie Burke. Hoskins Biscuits Worrell edged out CSC teammate Stevenson Bell to win last night's Invitational Classic title at the Darcy Beckles Bodybuilding Classic at the Lloyd Erskine Sandiford Center. Opening the show were the ladies in the body fitness competition, and it came down to these three Janelle Chalier of Trinidad and Tobago and the Bajan duo of Ramona Morgan and Sharon Coppin. When the scores were tallied, Chalier strutted her stuff to third. Coppin, who looked in fine form, was second, but she was no match for Morgan, who was definitely a cut above the rest. The ladies' bikini competition was also another crowd pleaser, and this is third place, Gianna Johnson. She had an air of confidence as she paraded on stage. Second place went to Dominic Aline, who wasted no time in showing the crowd her definition. But from the time she entered the stage, the competition was all over. Melissa Burrows showed just why she's one of our national athletes fresh from the CIC Games. Not only her showmanship was on point, but her definition was impeccable. She strutted away with the bikini fitness title. To the men that had the women's tongues wagging, the men's physique competitors, and the competition was stiff. The guys were really in form. Pulling the charm ticket, releasing the locks for the ladies, was Trinidad and Tobago's Rocky Cooley. He was almost picture perfect on the night but had to settle for a third spot. That's because the cut above him was Ramon Dottie Dodson. He too showed what it looked like to be in chisel shape. But the man who could consider 2013 as his year of dominance, Marlon Dottin, second at CAC and the reigning national champion, ensured the title at the Darcy Beckles Classic was also his. To the big men, starting with the Open Classic, six competitors in this section. All eyes on Joe Bourne up against Laron Gibson. At the end of the post down, it was like this. Samuel Eastman, he enjoyed himself on stage to actually take third spot. And it was a veteran Bourne who had to settle for second. He's still looking in great shape. But all year, Laron Gibson has been on top of his game. Look at that definition. He was no doubt the top of them all in the Open Classic. The crowd got a treat when guest poser IFFB pro Sean Roden got up close and personal and the cameras came out. He paved the way for the big showdown, the men's Open Classic. Gibson again was on stage, but this time, it would be a third place finish. In second, making a grand entrance to his routine, was national champion Stevenson Bell. Boy, is he in form. As the song said, nothing can compare to the season he's been having. Entertaining the crowd in the process. But to his dismay, the night was not to be his. It belonged to this man, Hoskins Biscuit Worrell. The four-time champion added another classic title to his accolades. He was like a man of steel in his routine. Really showing the flexibility of the muscles. Definitely deserving of the title. The Darcy Beckles Classic was an evening of entertainment and fitness showmanship. Well, Barbados are the champions of the first ever Northern Ireland International Netball Festival. Playing in the final today against the hosts, the Bajans led all quarters before coming away with a nine-goal victory. Barbados were up 15-10 after the first quarter and 22-18 at the half. The game was virtually won in the third where Barbados opened a 10-goal gap before winning 47-38. Barbados, who played unbeaten in the tournament, have now improved their world ranking and now they are ninth in the world. 
Two centuries were the highlight of today's fourth round of the Sajikor General Super Cup, which saw only four matches being played. Marlon Welcome Goodman picked up his second century of the tournament, but in a losing effort as the BDF Sports Program went down by four wickets to Republic Bank St. Catherine. Welcome Goodman scored an even 100 as BDF made 180 of 41.2 of the reduced 47 overs. St. Catherine finally getting their first game of the season made sure it was a victory. Scoring 181 for 6 in 42.5 overs, Stephen Kataru was unbeaten on 56. Meanwhile, Shane Mosley also scored an even turn to lead Carlton to a 5-wicket victory over Conkta Point Warriors and this was at the Desmond Haynes Oval. Warriors made 230 in 49 overs, batting first with 52 from Diego Stewart and 51 from Ian Bradshaw. Mosley's 100 along with 51 from Von Richner saw Carlton chase down the target. They scored 232 for 5 with 11 balls to spare. And Inks Transport MTW rebounded from yesterday's loss to beat Premix and Precast Yorkshire by 60 runs. And this was at the Pine Basin. Scores in that game reduced to 43 overs aside. MTW won 65 in 41.2 overs with Raymond Kalman getting 78. Yorkshire made 105 all out in 39 overs. And at four square oval, CGI Maple beat ESA Field Pickwick by 30 runs. Maple made 122 in 48.4 overs. Pickwick were 92 all out in 40. The other four matches were called off due to wet conditions. Cyclone have taken the 2013 C.O. Williams Michiwet BCL knockout title. Playing in the final at the Dash Valley ground today, Cyclone walked away with an 18 run win over Newberry. Batting first after winning the toss, Cyclone posted 127, led by 34 from Edwin Vaughan and 31 from Omar Wiggins. Two wickets apiece went to Ryan Worrell, Kimar Bishop, Jimmy Thomas and Brian Morris. But in reply, despite an impressive 35 from Rondell Springer, Newberry fell short on 110 all out of 31.5 overs. Theodore Thomas, Ian Branch and David Carrington had two wickets each to their names. So it was victory to Cyclone. The National Sports Council's Super Center Senior Schools Volleyball Competition has served off. Combermere picked up their first win in the girls' division, beating Springer Memorial at Waterford. CBC's Marsha Boyce reports. Springer Memorial with the serve against Combermere. Kayla Richards going cross-court for the point for the Combermereans. These two teams had similar colors, so to keep track in this first set, the Combermereans are back in the camera. The outside set for Tiffany Smith, but the shot's long point to Springer. Smith didn't miss out on her next opportunity, targeting the backcourt. Combermere took the first set 25-13. Combermere had a good start to the second set as well, with Gabrielle Williams holding serve for about seven unanswered points. But Springer would rally, benefiting from some errors by the Combermerians. They created some attacking plays in the second set as well. Shante Seal with the set to Crystal Knight, clipping Combermere's Kayla Richards for the point. But they wouldn't be able to force a third, as with that ace, Combermere took the second 25-15 for the straight set's victory. Marsha Boyce, CBC Sports. In some other results, Combermere boys defeated Lodge in contrasting sets 25-8, 26-24, while Corrigan Parry topped Graydon Seeley 25-11, 25-8.